Hello folks, it's Matsmus, and thanks again for joining me today. We're going back to the world of naval warfare, and in particular the seven deadliest naval close-in weapon systems. Now, in terms of technological warfare, these things are extremely advanced, being able to knock out projectiles at extremely high speeds from long range, protecting any kind of surface vessel in a combat naval environment. Uh, you know, we've seen all the movies of the Sea Wiz and all that good stuff, pumping out rounds to knock out things out, to, out of the sky. You know, we saw Battleship, which was a... Um, well, it was a special movie, really, wasn't it? And we saw all the projectiles flying in and the close-in weapon systems just lighting them up. And it looks really, really cool. Uh, and honestly, in terms of naval firepower, when you look at these things firing, they are just really, really amazing bits of kit to see. But which one of these weapons platforms is the most formidable when it comes to dependability of defending its ship? Because at the end of the day, all it's required to do is engage its own defensive measures to be able to protect the ship. Now there has been instances where these weapons platforms have been used to engage surface vessels. Honestly, I have no idea why anyone would want to take a small surface vessel towards a ship carrying these kinds of weapon platforms, but you know, Somali pirates tend to just have a little bit too much drugs into their system and you know, do some crazy stuff. So let's go over the seven deadliest naval close-in weapon systems. So from automated cannons that literally shred their targets to pieces to extremely agile missile systems, close-in weapon systems are the vessel's last line of defense against anything hostile above the waterline that is danger close. Lasers will eventually, potentially, take on the majority of this duty, but in the meantime, let's have a look at these seven weapons and see which one is put into the highest operation on the high seas. Let's start off with the granddaddy of close weapon systems. The AK-630 was first tested in the mid-1960s. It is Russian and took almost a decade to become operational. In its original form, this turreted cannon system gets its fire control guidance from a remotely mounted radar system, an optical sight or an old school set of iron sights located next to the cannon installation. When fired, it slings 30 times 165mm cannon shells at over 5 thousand rounds per minute. This wall of lead shatters pretty much any incoming missile, aircraft missile, or small boats with very good reliability. The AK-630 was a staple of any Soviet surface combatant during the last two decades of the Cold War, and over 1,000 of the systems have been built for internal Russian use or for export to almost two dozen countries. The system continues to be built today and much updated as the AK-630M2 Duet system, which is a stealthy looking turret design and packs two of these 30mm Gatling guns. This twin pack over and under design means the incoming targets pretty much get obliterated between two streams of the 30mm cannon fire, spewing downrange about 10,000 rounds a minute. And honestly, when I think about streams, all I can think about is Ghostbusters, don't cross the streams! Uh, but crossing the streams of firepower like this, I think it's, it's definitely within reason. Tried and tested, this is an extremely reliable defensive platform for Russian naval vessels. But at the end of the day, it does have some rather dated technology when it comes to tracking and assisting in actually locating the projectile coming towards it. In terms of firepower, it ticks every single box, but compared to some of the other more modern Russian anti-missile weapon systems, this one is lacking a little behind. However, I give it a massive salute and respect for the fact that it has been operating for so long and for so well. Next up is the Italian Dardo, otherwise known as the Dart. This close-in weapon system takes a different approach to engaging incoming enemies. Instead of slinging a wall of armor-piercing ammo at its target, it fires a larger 40mm high-explosive cannon shell to get the job done. Built by Otto Malaria and featuring a pair of Swedish-designed 40mm Bofa cannons, the gun may only throw out around 750 rounds per minute, but those large rounds pack a huge fragmentation radius and powerful concussive punch to any electronic systems within missiles and such. The targeting system also uses a remotely mounted radar and fire control system. It is exported to close to a dozen countries around the globe including Venezuela, South Korea, Malaysia and strangely enough Iraq. Considering that the gun is still able to fire quite a few rounds at long distance and with a massive firepower once it gets there, it is a very capable anti-missile system. Yes, the moment you've all been waiting for, the American Mark 15 Phalanx is at number 5, probably the most famous of all the close-in weapon systems around the world and a movie star in its own right, having appeared in blockbusters like Under Siege, Sum of All Fears, Battleship, the Phalanx is very, very well referred to as being the demented sibling of Star Wars beloved R2-D2's droid. The Phalanx packs a massive 
M61 Vulcan 20mm cannon, a gun found on almost every modern American fighter aircraft since the F-104 Starfighter. Its six revolving barrels spray out a stream of tungsten saber armor piercing rounds at a rate of 75 rounds a second. The Phalanx's iconic white cylindrical appearance comes from its self-contained radar system which is very unique for most weapon platforms on ships. The top of the unit houses a rotating search radar and the center of the unit houses its sensitive tracking radar. Later block models have also had a high resolution FLIR and electro optical sensor mounted to the left of their cannon barrels. This unique configuration allows for an almost entirely self-contained drop-in system which basically means it can be craned on and off a ship very easily as a modular platform, where no additional radar or sensors are needed to employ the system aside from the command and control console inside the bridge. This is a huge plus as the phalanx can easily and relatively cheaply integrate itself into virtually any vessel large enough to accept it. The phalanx, which entered service close to a decade after the Soviet AK-630, can be employed autonomously, where it fires freely at targets that it identifies as hostile. Semi-autonomously, which basically asks permission from the sailor manning its command console, or manually, basically using a joystick and destroying everything, where a crewman can basically steer the gun and fire it via the joystick using a visual feed from the system's optical sensors. Although Phalanx doesn't really pack as big of a punch as many of the other CIWS systems in this countdown, it remains a huge staple of the US Navy and many other navies around the world for many decades after its initial fielding. For what it lacks in firepower, it makes up for in decades of testing, accuracy, refinement and improvement. Additionally, its soulless appearance and twitchy drive system make it quite freaky to watch in action sometimes. It's so purposeful when it moves, it's as if it has a mind of its own, and I absolutely love this CIWS, and I'm sure many of you out there will agree. Next up in number 4 is the Swiss German Millennium Gun. This high-tech CIWS is manufactured by Eklon Defense and is one nasty little missile murderer. The gun itself is just part of a two-part weapon system where the ammo it fires is considered smart. The gun measures the speed of each 35mm cannon shell coming out of its bore of over 1000 rounds per minute, and it then programs each of the shells to detonate at a preset distance, at which time over 150 pieces of shrapnel fly in every direction at well over the speed of sound. The combo of the Millennium's gun's big shell with a large and precise blast radius and its high speed firing rate equals a very high probability that it kills or catastrophically disables the hostile threat in a very short period of time. The gun is housed in a low observable or stealthy turret that is almost entirely self-contained. It can even run on battery power alone and it uses a modular control system interface that can be tied into existing fire control systems. Currently this super smart cannon is fielded by Denmark and Venezuela but many other navies are looking at it for their future service combatants as a way to breathe some new life into their aging ship defenses. The whole idea is that this system can be fielded on any ship with a large enough deck space to accommodate it with very limited modifications. A very impressive modern technological piece of equipment. In at number 3 is the very impressive Dutch goalkeeper. Take the Phalanx's fire control concept and ditch its 20mm Vulcan cannon for the famed 30mm Gau 8 Avenger cannon, the same monster that is mounted in the A10 Warthog and you get one hardcore screen of fire defending your ship. This high rate of fire, sea skimming missile pulverizing capability is given the dirty harry of the CIWS world if you will. The goalkeeper is truly one scary looking CIWS with the massive cannon that it has on the front of it. With its large mounting structure needed to handle the massive thrust of the Avenger cannon when it spews solid tungsten sabo penetrators at 4200 rounds per minute, it is kick ass. It is almost double the range and much more destructive than the little cousin known as the Phalanx, and it is also in the process of receiving upgrades to include a FLIR system so that it can chew apart fast boats and other doomed floating enemy objects with ease. In at number 2 is the American C-Ram. The Raytheon C-Ram CIWS takes a proven self-contained and compact design of the Phalanx and ditches the 20mm Vulcan cannon for a box launcher packed with 11 RIM-116 rolling airframe missiles known as RAM. The super agile RAM is now a staple on America's heaviest surface combatant fleet, and it hits extremely maneuverable with supersonic sea skimming targets at over 6 miles from its launching point. The ram's name comes from the fact that it spins in flight, much like a rifle bullet in order to stabilize itself at speeds over Mach 2. Originally the missile and its swiveling box launchers had to be integrated into the ship's combat system for queuing. 
Now, with the addition of the Phalanx's sensors and fire control system, the whole system can be entirely self-contained and dependent. This allows smaller, less complex warships to have a point of defense missile system capable of reaching out far beyond traditional CIWS defensive ranges. The RIM-116 missiles, which cost hundreds of thousands of dollars each, home in on their target via an imaging infrared seeker similar to what is found on the AIM-9X Sidewinders, as well as the passive seeker that sniffs out the missile's terminal guidance radar. This dual mode capability means there is very little escape for anti-ship missiles, even if they rely on passive guidance for the terminal portion of their attack profile. Overall, this is an extremely capable anti-missile and anti-aircraft platform, and to be honest, I am very, very happy to see these platforms coming into service, because at the end of the day, traditional munitions can only go so far, and if we can prevent those missiles coming in at long ranges before it even gets close to the ship, why not? And finally, in at number one is the Russian Kashtan, otherwise known as Chestnut, surface protecting system. What do you get when you combine the hard-hitting close punch of the AK-630's 30mm cannon with the long range and agility of a guided missile system and then multiply it by two? This is the mother of all CIWS systems and is complete overkill, but I love it. The Kashtan is one large and destructive beast. It packs a pair of 30mm cannons and features no less than eight short-range radio-guided 9M311 surface-to-air missiles in a hulking swiveling turret. As many as eight turrets, all of which feature their own scanning and tracking radar systems, as well as electro-optical infrared sensors, can be tied to central fire control systems, which can further be integrated onto ships' overall combat systems. As in the case with the Russians' only aircraft carrier, the Admiral Kustanov, which is I pretty much discussed recently, is packed to the nines with weapons platforms. Such as a system amounts to the ability to put so many rounds and so many missiles in the air in rapid succession that it is basically next to impossible for most things to actually get its way towards the ship to survive. Literally, this thing is overpowering any kind of enemy or missile by huge amounts of firepower. The Kashtan really is the kitchen sink and then some method to protecting the innermost realm of the surface combatant's defensive perimeter. Its missiles can be used to initially engage hostile targets while the cannons are there for any surviving missiles or aircraft that leak through. The system is so redundant that it actually features a lower missile magazine with up to 32 additional 9M311s that can be automatically loaded onto the Kashtan's launching arms should the first eight missiles, usually fired in salvos of two like the Ram, not be enough. The Kashtan really is one hell of a CIWS package, albeit it does have a larger footprint than most of the other Western plug-and-play close-in weapon systems, it seems that the US may have missed the opportunity to build their own super CIWS, maybe one featuring the goalkeeper's big-ass Gawai Avenger cannon and an 11-round pack of Fire Forget Rim 116 rolling anti-airframe missiles. That's probably what they should be looking into, all tied into a modular phalanx fire control unit. Wishful thinking aside, the Kashtan's heavy hitting, long range and redundant punch takes care of the world's most deadliest CIWS threats. Overall guys, I love this thing, I think it's just an overpowering beast, and uh, you know, if it was put into combat I can almost guarantee it's going to knock just about anything out of the sky. So there we have it, my personal opinion on close-in weapon systems for navies around the world and which one I find is to be the best. Let me know in the comments section which one you think is the best and if you disagree or agree with my opinion on these gun platforms. Guys, I really appreciate you stopping by today. If you want to support my channel, please feel free to go check out my Patreon account. I'd really appreciate it and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Leave a like, check me out on Facebook and I will see you again for the next review of military equipment or some gaming videos. Hit that little bell beside the subscribe button to be notified. Bye-bye.